Hello and welcome to another Manager of Your Special from the Orange Foot Podcast. I'm Craig Sarge and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Today we're talking about the hiring of Liam Resenia as their new head coach. He replaces Shota Avaladze at Hull. This has been a long time coming considering how long ago Shota Avaladze had been sacked. It was late September and now we're in early November and they finally hired their new man. So let's talk about the, the previous manager, Shota Avaladze. He came in to replace Grant McCann under and obviously the new ownership at Hull. Um, he expected attacking football, but in the end, there wasn't any. Well, I don't know if there wasn't any, but there wasn't a huge tangible change. Um, I think more the style of play was different, but I mean, we talked about it before when it was all happening. The Grant McCann sacking was harsh in a way, but he wanted to go to this progressive style, which is fine. And with a coach, he knew. But to then not stick with it and the way he went, obviously few hours before a game, which they ended up losing, talking about a uh, difference in vision for the club, which surely they'd have discussed before. It just, it seemed a little bit off. I mean, he didn't do too badly for a side that were expected to be in the bottom half, a 30% win rate. They signed some good players in the summer. They started quite well, had a lot of injuries after that. They had, I think they had a full 11 out at one point, but I, I just don't think that he was given time considering the situation. They did start promisingly before those injuries and, for me, it was a little bit harsh, but if there's problems between the board and the manager, there's always going to end with a sacking. And the problem is, we can't get to this situation with this owner where it happens regularly. It's a, it's two times now that I've been a bit concerned. The first one I accepted because he wanted to bring in his own man, but this one he had his own man and he's fallen out despite extenuating circumstances. And they've got worse in the last six weeks in terms of positioning the table. The disagreements that were said that happened during the international window, and as you said, it the, the sacking finally came on the day of the game. What was the owners thinking? What why did they wait so long to make that decision? Because then it was literally those two weeks off. You have to wonder if it was a a proper falling out over something, because for it to be at the end of what thirteen days off, and then to do it six hours before a match kicked off, or seven hours, whatever it was, it, it is a bit strange. And to be fair to Arthur Ladzi, I know he's not. Obviously managed at some in some of the biggest leagues in Europe, but he has managed some decent clubs and he's got decent records at most of them. So considering how he'd got on, the style of football definitely changed. I know it wasn't particularly aggressive in terms of scoring lots of goals, but they were playing out from the back a bit more. Yes, getting caught at times, but the philosophy was definitely different and they weren't doing any worse than they were under Grant McCann. So I, I was a little bit surprised at the timing of it in particular. I think most people were, but... Yeah, it, it just gives me a little question mark about the owner, who up until that point had obviously had a pretty seamless relationship with the whole fans. So let's get on with the new man in charge. It is a former player in Liam Bruce Senior. Uh, the club's statement is as follows. Hull are delighted to, well, uh, to announce Liam Bruce Senior as a new head coach. The highly regarded 38-year-old that's on a two-and-a-half-year deal at the MKMM. The former fullback returns to East Yorkshire having made 161 appearances in Black and Amber during a five-year spell between 2010 to 2015, winning promotion from the championship in 20, uh, 2012-13 season. Liam Rossini obviously has had manager experience. He was at Derby as interim at the start of this season, uh, had the 12 games, not a bad record, considering League One and those circumstances, gelling a, a new squad together. Another young head coach, do you feel this is the right move for him? I kind of think it is in this situation. I, I've got the same question mark I had about a couple of the other recent ones we've done, which is it's very evident he wasn't first choice because we obviously had that whole fiasco with Pedro Martins, who was at a game, watching it, agreed terms, but then didn't agree terms and joined. So there, there is that element to it. But I think Liam Rossini is an excellent coach. The words out of the game are always very good from experienced and young players. As you mentioned, I think he was harshly treated at Derby, to be honest. Did a really good job last season with Wayne Rooney. This season on his own, they were right up in the mix. They obviously opted to go for Paul Warren instead, but... I know it's only a 12-game sample size, but a 58% win rate and only three defeats. As you mentioned, in a League One where the top half is as close as it is, that's not a bad effort at all. And they basically, I don't know what it was about the East Midlands this summer, but they basically brought in a whole new squad as well because of the situation with the administration and the new owner coming in midway through pre-season. So I feel like in the circumstances, he did a really good job there. On paper, he looks a very good coach. The style of play Derby were playing under Rooney was interesting and it was quite aggressive. It was a high-pressing style at times. But 
it was with a lot of young attacking players and a very rock solid defence behind it. You had experienced people in there. And the worry I have looking at this whole side is they haven't really got that rock solid core at the back. They've got some good defensive players, but they've always been trained to play out from the back under Shotter Avaladzi. And looking going forward, they're probably a bit more experienced. They've got some higher profile names this year from abroad and they're not necessarily going to be the best candidates for the high pressing style. A bit like we discussed with West Brom and Corbrand, to be honest, very similar where the style doesn't quite match the players, but he'll be popular with the fans. He obviously was part of that brilliant run to the FA Cup final. He's been a big player for them. So hopefully he'll get the back in, he'll get the time. But I do worry in the head coach role how much of a say he's going to get in January. Yeah, absolutely. And he's been given a two and a half year role, uh, uh, two and a half year role, two and a half year deal, should I say, uh, Hull. Um, if other lads only lasted 30 games, you would hope that Liam Rossini at least last. Well, let's say to the end of the season, let alone two and a half years. Yeah, but the the problem is, is what's going to happen in the transfer window because he is going to have his own ideas. He is going to want his own style of player and there are going to need to be a few changes if he plays as we expect. But the problem with Hull in the summer is obviously a bit of a slapdash to get some bigger names in. And generally the recruitment wasn't bad. I will say that. Got themselves a very good striker, a couple of good midfield players, but still a little bit of work to do defensively for me. And... For Liam Rossini, you'd hope he will get the time, but we know what the championship's like. Every team, and we've seen this is why we've seen more sackings this season, because the whole league's separated by about 12, 15 points. So as soon as someone loses three games, they're suddenly panicking and in relegation trouble. It's probably the closest championship you ever remember. So that gives me cause for concern. Will they panic if he's down there? Will he get the time if things don't go his way, if they have more injuries, if they don't get the players they want in January? I don't know. And are, are the players that come in in January, we're going to be able to tell after that window immediately, are they players that Liam Rossini has had a say in and is interested in, or are they the owner's players? Because I've still got a mixed view on that from the last two windows, but uh, I'll be interested to see what happens come 1st of February. I think that's when we can really judge Liam Rossini. Let's look at his uh, his fr- uh, first three games, obviously before the, the uh, World Cup starts. Mill away, Cardiff away, and then Reading at home. Out of the nine points, what target points would you set them? Well, to be honest, I maybe take away Mill or away this weekend. I know they've made us look stupid in our predictions because we just recorded it before he got appointed. And I said, maybe Racine will be in charge at the weekend. But the big difference for me is after that game where Mill were brilliant at home, Cardiff and Reading are real opportunities to get points. Cardiff, obviously, very similar situation. Sat their manager about the same time, no replacement yet. And Reading, although they've started well, they're a very direct team. And they're a very experienced team. If you get the first goal, particularly when Reading are away from home, you can beat them. So I'd be looking at both of the, the second and third game as winnable. The weekend's all going to be about defensive solidity. Can they avoid conceding those twos, threes and fours and those silly goals we've seen? But my worry then after the World Cup, you've got obviously Watford, Sunderland, but then a run against Blackpool, Birmingham, Wigan, Huddersfield, all sides that are either down there or expected to be down there. He's got to get something out or get a tune out of this squad before the window opens because in those next six or seven games, either side of the World Cup, five or six of them are against those rivals down there. And you can't afford to be playing catch up when you get to January. And when you get those new signings in, yes, they're probably going to make an impact. But when you're playing your Sheffield United, QPR, Norwich, etc., it's going to be a much trickier run. So he's got to try and get results in the short term. Again, similar to Corbran at West Brom last week. It's not about playing pretty football at the minute. Get results till January, then play the style you want to long term. That's my opinion. Uh, uh, how do you see um, Rosinha and Hull for the rest of this season? I don't really expect a great deal. I think obviously there was this big talk when the owner came in about promotion in two years and whatever. And they're always very ambitious because until you've worked in a championship, you don't realise how much of an absolute lunacy it is for the large part. I still think they've got a chance to be comfortably in mid-table because there's very few points separating it. And there are a lot of teams in mid-table on that slide after a good start now. So not doomed for sure, getting players back from injuries. And I think for Hull, I think they'll be all right. I don't think they're going to go down, to be honest. So I'd probably say about two thirds of the way down, somewhere from 15th to 18th, 19th. I don't think they'll set the world alight, but January could change that. 
No, I, I have to go the same, to be honest. Uh, 15th, 19th, maybe the 21st. I think, obviously, Hull will want to survive. I, I hope that he gets given time. Yeah. Even if they're not on a, a rich, in, in any good form, they stick by him. That's that's my only worry for Rossini is, is it, it could get the hit on on the chairman, on the owner. So hopefully they stick by him, listen to his philosophy. If he gets off to a good start, they'll, they'll, they'll be absolutely fine. But yeah, I, I think come January, yeah, recruitment has to be important, especially in defence. They can't that team cannot play out the back. They're not good enough to play out from the back. For me, that needs to what Hull needs to improve on is they've got obviously got the attacking force. It's just they've got to get up the pitch to get to that ta- attacking force. We've seen you. Hopefully, you can see up this season. I'll, I'll probably say eighteenth, nineteenth, and then maybe have hopefully get a good rec- a good summer next year. To build on it but if they get relegated I'll, I'll be very concerned by whole status anyway yeah the only thing i would add to it and it would help rosini is i get why he was doing it at first but it really isn't helpful that every single scenario with Hull is now being played out in public like he's on radio stations tv stations every two or three days talking about the updated process and yes in one way it's great for fans to have that transparency but like when you invite a manager to the game say a deal's basically done on national radio, and then the day after, it transpires he's not joining at all. I think that I think that's what Hull fans have. Well, the Hull fans didn't have any transparency with the previous owners. But it's the so balance, that's... isn't it? You don't need everything and every step of the negotiation in public. I keen. get why he the, was man's doing it. the man's he keen. The man's keen. He's keen. He's, he's, his he... heart's in the right place for it. Yeah, yeah I got I got no problem with the heart being the right place. It's just you have to do it when it's right. But at the end of the day, he's got his he's got his man who we think is probably be a better choice than the, the first choice. Agreed. Because he he knows the championship. He's been he's had to deal with hard situations as a coach of Derby, considering their circumstances with no money and no well administration problems. So it's not an easy one to go. Yeah, he's in, and it'll go bad. It, it, it has to that has to build. Agreed. He has to be given time. He is he's a great young coach. He's obviously been very highly regarded in the game. Would just say great to see Andy Dawson staying involved as well because he has helped them out a number of times now, and he is another former player. Be interesting to see what the rest of the backroom team is. I just hope that maybe someone experienced comes in as well. A bit like we said for Michael Carrick. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. I, I can't think of who. Maybe Alex Bruce might might get a nod. I don't know. Um, bring Steve in, like the old Steve McLaren at Derby. It'll be Steve Bruce uh, at home. No, nah, that won't happen. That won't happen. I think Bruce is on the <laughs> retirement section now. But no, I think Alex Bruce could be within a good shout. Uh, another former player. Maybe someone links with Brighton. I don't. I don't know. I wouldn't know actually. So it'd be interesting to, to see what would happen with his coaching staff. That is our thoughts on the hiring of Liam Racine as the new head coach of Hull City. Let us know down in the comments. How do you think he will get on in charge at the Tigers? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>